Here's a quick head-to-head -head between Excel and Power BI, just to show you the difference in terms of how you build these things. I'm going to build pivot table versus matrix, uh, a chart, a bar chart versus a bar chart, and a card visual. Okay, in both. So let's see how we go. Let's go. So my basis here is I've already loaded some data using Power Query into an Excel data model. Okay, if you're not sure about that stuff, I've got a whole raft of videos, a little link will pop up. So then I'm just going to go and insert a pivot table from the data model. So this is a quick um, matrix option. So I'm just going to go to my sales table. I've already written a measure called units sold. Okay, that's going to go in there. And I'm going to go to my product table and put product name in the rows. And then maybe for calendar, I just want the year in the columns. Okay, perfect. All good. And then we'll add a slicer as well. So I just want to put a slicer maybe on store code. So right click, add to report filter. Nope, I want to add as a slicer. And now I can slice and dice by the different store codes. Great. Okay, let's see how to do that in Power BI and then we'll come back and do the chart comparison. So back into Power BI, here we go. Now, if you've already built a model in Excel, you may have done, okay, you can actually import that as a one-off. So file, import, Power Query, Power Pivot, oof, Power View. I wonder why that's still even there. Um, if anybody's importing Power View, then that's an interesting one. Okay, we're just gonna go and import this data. This is bringing in the Power Queries. I'll say Keep Connection. It's creating the relationships that I had in the Excel one. It's creating the measure that I had already. All good. So here's my tables down the side. Um, and let's do the, the matrix visual. So here we go, matrix visual. I just want to do it as from the sales table. There's my measure. Okay. And in the columns, again, you can use, I've got on object enabled, so I could go over here, and say in the columns, I want to put calendar year. Okay, there we go. And there's my breakdown. And then if you want to add a slicer, I'm going to click on here. Let's do it this way. Add a visual. Okay. I am going to change it to a slicer. Extra click involved there, doing it on the on, on object rather than just clicking it from over here. That's okay. Uh, add some data. And then from the sales table, I'll add store code. And there we have it. We have a nice little slicer. Okay. The nice thing about this slicer is you can turn it into a drop down and you can change it over here. If I double click on this, okay, it goes into formatting mode. And over on the right, I can change the slicer settings to be a drop down list, or I quite like tiles. Or you can even use the new slicer as well. Okay. I wish Excel did that that easily. It'd be nice. Okay. You can make it horizontal. You can't make a drop down with a slicer in Excel. Great. Okay, next one. Not much difference in that one. Okay, now I want to do a chart, um, just a little bar chart showing total sales by product name. Now, if I want to keep this, I've got to do another um, pivot table because every pivot chart is related to a pivot table. So maybe I need a new working sheet. Okay, I'm going to go insert pivot table from data model. And I am going to tick um, product name. And again, I'll tick unit sold. Okay, I'm just going to move this pivot table that got added over here so that we're not zooming about the screen. Okay, so we've got that. Then we go and insert a chart. So insert, let's go for the bar chart. So that's, that's my basic chart. But in the, if I want to clean this up, I've got a whole bunch of clicks. 
So right click, let's say hide all the field buttons on the chart. Maybe I don't need a, to a title for now. Maybe I don't need an axis. Maybe I don't need the bars. Don't need the legend. Mm, I'd like this sorted max to min, so I have to right click in my pivot table and go sort, weirdly, smallest to largest. That makes your chart sort largest to smallest. Always been a weird thing. Also a bit, bit of a gap in there as well. So um, let's click on the bar, go down to format data series, make the gap about, I don't know, let's say 30%, 20% or something like that, that'll do. Um, right click, add data labels. Okay, not too bad. All right, we're there, quite a few clicks. Um, now, if I want that slicer over here to control that chart as well, because maybe I'll be putting this chart and that other pivot table on the same page, then I can come over to the slicer. I can go slicer, uh, report connections, and I can pick this pivot table as well. And now this is only the figures for store one. If I click that one and flick back, that's the figures for store two. Okay, so it's controlling both and I can put both things on the same page. All right, Power BI, let's go. So we're in here. We go to uh, unit sold, give it a tick. We go to product name, give it a tick. And we just change it to a bar chart. All right, pretty good. We can now double click on the chart if you've got on object interaction. It's a preview feature, you have to enable it. Um, add data labels, lovely. Uh, these things got to delete. Okay, this thing really annoys me, got to delete. Uh, this axis as well. So there we go. Same sort of idea. Uh, sorry, delete. Nope, not delete visual. A little bit fiddly. Okay, I don't like this interaction there. Um, already sorted, great. Um, headings are already in there with something useful rather than just the word total. But I often change that, so you can double click on it, get rid of it, or even over on the right here, just turn it off. Okay, last one, card visual. So I'm on this page, I may as well do it here. Pretty simple. Um, click on the card, or the new card if you've got that one as well, which you should have. Uh, click on unit sold, 16 million, all right? And everything on the page just gets filtered by that slicer automatically. What if I wanna do the card visual in Excel? How do you do that? Well, I can come in here. I could go back to uh, sheet one grand total, but again, as I, I could just reference this equals that cell using the get pivot data. I'll actually do it up here so it doesn't bash into anything. Okay, so that's my reference. I'm actually going to give we can actually give this a name, a name as well. So this could be my um, QTY for card. Okay, give it a little formatting here. All right, so then we just insert a shape. So insert, shape, little card, put some rounded corners in. And here comes the little trick. You click on the equal sign and you go and click on the value and it puts it in there, inside the card. So then you can make the card gray or white or whatever you want it to do. You could add a bit of shadow if you wanted. So we'll add a bit of outer shadow. We'll make the fill a light gray. We'll go to the home and middle it. Okay, we'll increase the font a bit. Ooh, too much. So yeah, and you can also, okay, still in this, in this card, double click. Okay, press enter and type in, which is quite a nice little hack. All right. 
So within that card, and it's dynamic. So if I change this to store one, or store three, or store four. Okay, so you could put those, these bits, you can copy paste them and put them on a, a dashboard page. Okay, the additional thing I'm gonna mention that you don't have in Power BI, that you do have in Excel is this. You can right click on a chart and you can save it as a template. So you can reinstall, you can apply that template anytime you want. So if you're ever on a chart, you can simply go click, change chart type, okay? Go to your templates then, click on one of them, okay? And there's your pre-built chart, which is really nice. So nice and quick. I wish Power BI had that, that'd be lovely. All right, let me know what you think. Catch you in the next video. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.